Okay, let's talk about some aircraft features now. Level flight is also described as cruising, and this is when an aircraft is flying at a constant altitude. Now when that's occurring, the aircraft is not ascending or descending, and most aircraft are designed to fly this way. They're designed to minimize drag while cruising. If you think about it, most aircraft are really designed for transportation. So they want to get up in the air, they want to get they want to travel at a constant altitude and then they want to go back down again. So they're designed to travel that way using the least amount of fuel. Now if the plane's not ascending or descending, then this is a simple force balance of lift. The lift has to equal the weight of the aircraft. If we put in our lift equation, we can see that most of the things in here are fixed there's not much a pilot can do to affect these different variables. The coefficient of lift is a constant, the area is a constant, the weight of the aircraft, those are all fixed before the, the pilot takes off. So what you're left with is that rho u squared is a constant value for a specific aircraft. So aircraft are designed so that they have this constant equal to rho u rho u squared. Now the density of the fluid changes with altitude and it changes fairly predictably. It does vary a little day to day but, but really not all that much. So that specifies an altitude that the plane should fly and then the u during level flight is really fixed. This is something that's, that's not obvious. Um, pl flying a plane is not like flying a car. You can't travel at whatever speed you want. The aircraft are designed to travel at a certain altitude called the cruising altitude. And you'll hear the pilot refer to that when you, next time you're on a flight. And once you reach cruising altitude, the plane always flies at the same speed, some cruising, cruising velocity. And that's all dictated by the design of the aircraft. The pilot doesn't have much control over that. If the pilot inc wants to get there faster, so he so the pilot increases the speed, then the aircraft will climb, will ascend. And you can't just keep ascending for the whole flight. Um, now the pilot can, now air, air travel times can be affected by the um, wind direction. So if you're traveling uh, east to west across the country, it's going to be much slower than if you're traveling west to east because of the jet stream. Uh, so, if aircraft are designed for cruising, how are you able to get a plane off the ground and land? Now, you can accelerate and decelerate, so to land, all you really have to do is to slow down. But to take off, there's no way you can be on the ground and traveling faster than your cruising velocity. So, how do you get the lift to exceed the weight of the aircraft? The way this is typically done, it's by adjusting the coefficient of lift by literal, literally changing the wing. So here's the profile for a standard airfoil in commercial aircraft. And during takeoff, the pilot is able to segment the wing through a series of motors into this shape. So these different pieces separate and it changes the shape of the wing, changing the coefficient of lift. This design is called a triple slatted flop, a triple slotted flap with a slat, and it has several impacts on the airfoil. Number one, it increases the area of the airfoil. It increases the curvature of the airfoil, and that affects the coefficient of lift. It improves circulation on the wing, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the next slide. And then finally, these, these slots actually allow a little air to seep through the wing. And what that does is it, is it stabilizes the boundary layer. It prevents flow separation. If you remember, if you try to get too much lift out of a wing, you can cause the wing to stall. And this prevents or, or reduces the likelihood that the wing is going to stall. 
you might see the pilot deploy another flap when it's land when when they're landing and this flap often pops up at landing and it's called the spoiler and that gives you a little idea of what it does this is designed to induce flow separation so this this actually causes the wing to stall so why would you want your wing to stall when you're landing you want to slow down rapidly and you want to stay on the ground so this causes high drag and low lift as you force the wing to into a stall situation okay circulation is a pretty complicated topic and I'm just want to mention it so you've heard it um, it's beyond the scope of this class it's it's really necessary for understanding the mathematics of lift and um, the basic idea is instantaneous vectors show flow around an airfoil so if we consider that there's high pressure below the wing and low pressure above the wing which we know is true if you draw vectors of how air is going to travel there's actually uh, vectors that show air going all the way around the wing. Now this doesn't really happen. There isn't a single packet of air that travels from the underside of the wing over the wing. But nevertheless there are these instantaneous vectors that that show this path. And that circulation it has a big impact on lift and design of airfoils. It plays a role in these trailing vortexes. Now if we look at an aircraft flying straight at us, again we've got high pressure below the wing, low pressure above the wing. At the tips of the wing there's, um, there's, a, there's no equilibrium there, right? So you have this high pressure meeting this low pressure. So we do have air sneaking around the tip of the wing. If you then project that forward as this plane is moving towards us, what happens is you get these vortexes Two, vortex, two vortexes spinning off the tips of the wings. You can see that in this photo. Here's this aircraft flying through a cloud, and you can see those vortexes swirling off behind the aircraft. You can also see that the, the wings have features on the ends of them. You can see they're bent upwards right at the tip. Those are called winglets, and it's pretty common for aircraft these days. They've only started putting these on in the last 10 or 15 years. Um, these are designed to reduce these trailing vortexes, and they're quite effective. These, the trailing vortexes um, are a, a source of inefficiency for the wing. It's, a, it's definitely a waste of energy, and these winglets help reduce the trailing vortexes. This also explains a little bit why the um, higher aspect ratio wings are more efficient. If you have a long, thin wing, then those tip effects are really minimized. If you have a short, fat wing, most of the wing is going to be affected by this loss of energy, and it's inefficient. In addition to just saving energy and being more efficient flyers, these vortexes can actually be dangerous. Um, there's been several incidences, incidences of aircraft crashing because they got too close behind a larger aircraft. And those vortexes can just flip a plane right over. 